Well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we're approaching that time of year again where we like to fantasize about a big old fat man breaking and entering into our houses. On any other day, this kind of behavior would be seen as, well, disturbing. I mean, if someone's crazy enough to go down your chimney, who knows what else they're inclined to do from there. All it takes is one bad Christmas, folks. One household that forgets to put out those milk and cookies. Just some food for thought. Forewarned is forearmed, after all. So kids, if you suspect that Santa is in your home this Christmas Eve, you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Because that man might have a gun, and you have to be very, very quiet. But you know, that's just another way at looking at Christmas. Just like there's another way at looking at one of my favorite Christmas movies. This film is about a young boy who gets spirited away one night on a magic train rolling through his neighborhood. While on his unprecedented journey, he is constantly berated for his lack of belief in a certain mythical entity. Some of you might relate to that. The train rolls along as they make their way to the North Pole. If you couldn't guess by now, I'm of course talking about Tom Hanks's A Train Ride Through Uncanny Valley, or as it's known here in North America, The Polar Express. Don't get me wrong, I, I fucking love this movie. There are scenes in it that are just downright gorgeous, but there are many others that remind you that it was 2004 and CGI just wasn't quite there yet. <laughs> Something about it is just a little off, but it's off by just the amount I like. The film stars Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks, and Tom Hanks again, among others like Tom Hanks. Yeah, you can definitely tell he helped produce this movie. Of his numerous characters, the train conductor is my favorite. In my opinion, he is one of the characters in all of cinema. I'm serious. His goals are simple, but he executes them with such intensity. He is truly dedicated to getting that train to its destination on time. He also serves as the initiator into this world of Christmas wonder. You know, he's like the white rabbit leading all the young Alice's down a rabbit hole. Or, in this film's case, a creepy ass tunnel. Seriously, what the fuck was that? And if you lose your ticket... No, no, no. You can't lose your ticket. You mean, you have lost your ticket? Because that's going to mean being dragged up on top of the train in some negative number degree weather. He takes his job seriously, and I admire that. These tickets are not transferable. Come to think of it, look at what the kids are wearing. Do you really think those nightgowns and bathrobes are going to keep them warm? Unless this magic train can somehow shield them from the freezing cold, I think we're looking at one charge of child neglect right there. Actually, there's a lot of charges we can stack against the Polar Express. We also have child endangerment. Look at that. Yeah, it sure does look like fun on the outside, but on the inside, I think at best we're looking at numerous concussions. Oh, and child abduction. That's a big one. Yeah, it doesn't matter if the child consented to getting on that train. Uh, where's the parental consent? That's kind of important. But you know, it's the 1950s, so we'll cut them some slack on child safety. At least we're not dealing with communists. Nope! Wait, that's a lot of red and a lot of camaraderie there at the end. Oh no, the whole thing's a bit sus. Uh, kind of lost my train of thought there for a moment. Oh well, let's keep rolling. Choo choo. Well, yeah, speaking of kids, uh, the title of this video isn't just there for clickbaiting purposes. This movie is actually terrifying. And although there is some intentionally scary imagery in this otherwise wholesome kids movie, what really shits the jammies are the kids themselves. I mean, look at them. L look at them. Th this girl right here has a face like a Halloween mask. Oh, and when they get to the North Pole, the elves are just as terrifying. Especially Steven Tyler Elf. Because that's what the world was missing. Uh, Steven Tyler as an elf. We didn't want it. We didn't ask for it, but there it is. Damn. Lost my train of thought again. Choo choo. So they get to the North Pole. Spoiler alert. Actually, why would that be a spoiler? Imagine a Christmas movie about a magic train going to the North Pole, and they don't actually make it there. That'd be kind of interesting, you know, maybe, maybe it's all a state of mind. Oh no. 
Okay, so they get there, and after some more episodes of child endangerment and neglect, as well as some more scary imagery... It's in good hands. Trust me. They make it to the big ceremony. And what's supposed to be a charming and whimsical scene comes off as... Rather intimidating. The big crowds, the elves chanting in unison, the big build-up to Santa's reveal... It seems like a human sacrifice is about to take place. He will choose one of you. But I guess that's the natural result of boarding a magic train with Thomas the Hank Engine here. But you know, despite all the odd elements, I still think this film is a wonderful Christmas classic. I recently went to an ice sculpture exhibit with a Polar Express theme. It was wonderful, um, the ice sculptures were fantastic, the craftsmanship was just phenomenal, and they definitely looked a lot more realistic than these mounds of cookie dough. I even shelled out 15 of my hard-earned blue-collar dollars on a replica of that bell you see at the end of the movie. You know, you know they say in the movie that you can only hear the bell's sweet jingle if you truly believe. Well, I think I believe. I believe. The fuck? I believe I'm out 15 bucks.